How did this all start? Why did this happen? Well, there was a law that was passed. And here, essentially, here's the Israeli settlement law summarized. So if you sold your house before 1948, thus giving up your ownership, you can reclaim ownership and kick out the current owners who are always Palestinian. And always, I'm using that as a rough term, but 99.99% of the time, it's Palestinian. Palestinians originally fled to Sheikh Jarrah, the town where displacements are currently happening, because they, the 700,000 Palestinians who were forced out of their homes during the creation of Israel, they fled to Sheikh Jarrah because they had nowhere else to go, because they were forcibly removed from their towns. Sheikh Jarrah turned into one of the only living centers for current Palestine. To put this all in analogy, the Israelis were like, hey son, guess what? We're making a state. You need a Kentucky Fried, get the f*** out of this place. So they, they got up, forcibly evicted and massacred thousands of people. 750,000 Palestinians fled. A lot of them went to Jordan, which, by the way, Jordan took over a part of the Palestinian land. So it's like they, they took over Jordan. Is, uh, the Palestinians fled to Jordan, but also fled back to some of their land. They had nowhere else to go. So they went to Sheikh Jarrah. And now the Israelis said, hey, we want this land as well. By the way, there's also this individual. His name is Arya King. He is the deputy mayor of Jerusalem. Now, he was actually a guy who was laughing at one of the political activists at the in the area. Um, I think his name was Muhammad Hummus. I apologize if I'm missing another uh, a name or I'm butchering his name in any sort of way. I'm just coming up with this off the top of my head. But I'll have sources here if you're watching this. But if you're listening to the story, essentially... This deputy mayor was laughing at this guy for getting shot and said that he should have gotten shot in the head instead. And this was an also an individual who had worked with U.S. nonprofits in order to raise money to put Israeli settlers, excuse me, Jewish settlers inside of these towns where Palestinians are forcibly evicted. So the landlords all got together and said, look, we don't want Palestinians to live here. With the law, they took over the land again, and then they forcibly evicted these Palestinians. Okay. The United States, by the way, gives like $220 million to Israeli settlements through nonprofits. Just a little fun fact for you guys. And this individual, Arya King, even said that his goal is to establish more of a Israeli Jewish land in that particular area. So a lot of the people who are taking up this guy's offer are people from the United States. There's even a viral video, by the way, of a guy from New York who decided to come in and kick a Palestinian family out. Technically, it was the landlord kicked the Palestinian family out, and then he moved in. And so there's these people who are the elderly, 80 years old, lived in that house the whole life. They're kicked out because some dude from New York wants to live there. Jacob, you know this is not your house. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. But well, you're you're, you're... It's easy to yell at me, but I didn't do this. The other aspect of this that I want to mention is that so far, even with the ceasefire, it does not appear the Palestinians get their homes back after the ceasefire. So the people who were forcibly evicted to begin with, they're not going to get their homes back. Okay, that's what started the conflict. So far, they're not going to get their homes back. So does this ceasefire lead to long-term peace and stability? Well, no, there's still people who are forcibly evicted. These, This isn't, a, this isn't, this isn't any sort of remedy. What it is, is it's an international gaslighting towards the Palestinian people. It's a concept that originates from this idea that because there was a genocide against the Jewish people, which was horrible and one of the worst things that humanity has ever done and experienced, that somehow that justifies what is currently coming into another genocide. You have to realize that I believe it's uh, 90, over 90%, I believe it's 93% of the Palestinian water over there is undrinkable. Palestinian territory is the densest populated areas in the world and one of the most impoverished areas in the world. Okay, let's just keep that in mind. So for everybody who thinks that the Palestinians do not deserve to uprise or resist, they should probably stop staring at a wall, like Andrew Yang, by the way, who made these comments about Hamas terrorists and how he stands with Israel, which I'm not a Hamas supporter, don't get me wrong. However, it is important to remember that these issues between the Israelis and Palestinians had gone on for 
30, 40 years before the creation of Hamas had even started, okay? So let's take Hamas out of the circle for a second, and let's have a deeper and broader perspective and understanding about the situation that we're currently dealing with. 